Oh, yes, finally I just got level 30. I'm going to go straight into ranked. You may think all your future ranked games will end like this. Victory. But in reality, it will most likely end like this. Unless you're a smurf or being carried by friends. So in this video, I would like to share my knowledge and show you a few things before you jump straight into ranked solo queue. First off, I would like to familiarize you with the current Season 3 meta, which may differ from your original normal blind games. Okay, going into the top lane, we usually have an AD or AP bruiser such as Jax or Elise. These guys tend to be able to take more damage than the other heroes. The middle lane usually has an AP carry such as Annie or Ryze, which tend to burst down or poke down squishier heroes quickly. Down in the bottom, we have an AD carry with the support. For AD carries, some examples are Ezreal or Vayne. AD carries are quite squishy and will get bursted down easily without the support's help. AD carries deal a lot of attack damage and is usually the one who gets all the kills with his attack speed. But with good positioning, without good positioning and protection, they aren't good. Supports are there for the AD carries and the rest of the team. They are required to help secure kills and light up the map with wards so the team has a visual advantage on the enemy team. For the supports, Sona or Tarek. Something you may not see when you're around levels 1 to, th 1 to 20 is the role of jungling which isn't a lane, but is at a role of taking various creep camps around the map such as blue buffs or wolves and ganking other lanes to help secure kill, CC and gap closers. We will go into buffs later. Examples of junglers are Xin Zhao, Fiddlesticks or Jarvan, which usually have gap closers and CC to help allies take down their laned rivals. Now on to some commonly used terms. AD is attack damage, type of damage most used by AD carries or bruisers. AP is ability power, type of damage most used by AP carry supports or bruises, ADC is attack damage carry, APC is ability power carry, tank the more armor and health built which reduces damage income, MR is magic resist, the total amount of resist towards magic, armor is a defense against attack damage, gank the action to move in on one's lane and interfere to secure a kill, tower dive to chase someone under their turret in order to kill, leash to help a jungler take a chosen camp for experience and the buff. Hard leash to leash without him smiting blue or red buff. Going on to GG's good game. Well, WP's well played. GLHF good luck have fun. Camping is to stay in one's lane for a long time. KS is kill ceiling. Don't say this. It's really annoying. Doesn't matter. KS should be kill securing, which is a good job. Invade to raid the enemy's blue or red camp. QQ is crying. So our guys always call Maya so your teammates know whether they're going to get ganked or not. So that'll help out. Just type in Maya when your enemy in your lane is missing. Alright, going into camp buffs. The red buff gives you slow and damage over time, also known as DPS. The blue buff gives mana regen and cooldown reduction. The dragon gives no buffs but extra gold for the team. The baron buffs gives a lot of health regen, mana regen, and bonus attack damage and ability power. The baron buff gives it when once killed Baron Nasha, the buff goes towards all your champions unless they're dead. Okay, and some more terms is buff, a timed aura that increases your hero stats in any way. CD is cooldown, CDR is cooldown reduction which can be bought from the store. DPS is damage per second. Now moving on to runes and masteries. If you don't already know, runes and masteries give bonus stats to your champion depending on how it's set up. These runes and masteries are examples only, and if they don't work right for you, try changing them around to suit the champion you're playing. Okay, in front of you now is an AD page example for masteries. It follows the 2109, set up, um, you can copy it over into yours if you wish, but again if it doesn't work for you, try fixing it to your advantage. And next up we have an AP page which is following 2109, and then we have a jungle page which follows a 51411 setup, and 
support which goes 113.16. Now moving on to runes, in front of you there's an 80 rune page example which uses 9 times greater mark of attack damage, 9 times greater seal of armor, 9 times greater glyph of scaling magic resist, 3 times greater quints of attack damage. Um, moving on, there is an AP rune page example which has 9 times greater mark of magic pen, 9 times greater seal of ability power, 9 times greater glyph of ability power, and 3 times greater quints of ability power. And again, if these things don't work out for you, just customize it to your advantage. Um, if you're wondering, the, the runes can be bought from the store. Just click on the yellow basket and go to runes on the left column of the store. Alright, enough for setting up your runes and masteries. We will now move into ranked lobby details, what you can pick and how to secure a victory. First off, everybody or almost everybody in rank is serious because they wish to move up in their league and go further on. So as I showed you before with the lanes, you are probably best practicing all those positions in normal games with your friends or on your own. Once getting to a stage where you're confident enough with at least two champions in every role, start by searching a solo queue ranked game or with a friend to duo. In the lobby, make sure you're kind to everyone in the chat and follow the rules. It's now time to call your lane. Call whatever your lane you're most confident in. If someone calls something you have already called and he is lower than you in the lobby position, either ignore him or try to negotiate a change. However, if they're higher than you in lobby position and someone calls what you've called, it's the rule to let them have that position. If you really want the position, just try to negotiate with him, but most likely it won't work. Just remind the first pick to trade with you so they don't get counterpicked. What's counterpicking you ask? Counterpicking is when you pick a champion that can dominate a certain champion in lane because of its weaknesses. A good site for this is www.lowcounter.com. But remember, don't counter a champion if you don't know how to play the dominant champion. It's always better to play a champion you're confident with rather than the counter for the sake of countering. Also, rank queues follow the draft pick formation. If you don't know already, draft pick allows you to ban certain champions that are considered too overpowered for the game. The banning can only be done whoever is at the top of the lobby position. Either team can see either enemy's champions that are being picked. You can only pick your desired runes and summoner spells here. The meta summoner spells are as follows. Flash and ignite for any role but support and jungle. Flash and exhaust for any support. Flash and smite for any jungle. But remember, these are just suggestions. You can do any order to help you best in your lane. Now getting into gameplay, tactics and positioning. Once spawned, the best items to get for anyone in lane except for support and junglers is boots and 3 health pots. These items provide great movement speed and good lane sustain. For supports, I suggest buying 2 wards and any items of your choosing. For junglers, I just suggest buying a hunter's machete and 5 health pots. You can then branch these items off into either recommended build or a custom build you think it goes well with your champion. Moving on to tactics, one of the most important things in the game is farming. You heard it right. It's better than kills but it's more consistent and coming in chunks. Last hitting is the most common tactic used which is only hitting minions which are low enough to be one hit with either a basic attack or an ability. This grants you the 16 gold. This doesn't push your lane and provides a sufficient amount of money for neutral lanes. Another important aspect is positioning. Following clip is a great example of positioning. The Leona which is supporting lands a perfect AoE stun on three enemies leaving misfortune the easy AoE ultimate to burst them down. That was good. Here's another great example of great positioning. Like I don't I didn't even want to be at the back. Holy shit! Oh my god, that's freaking hilarious. I decided to show the league system last because it was the least important to me. So, you can find out your leagues in your profile page. Go to leagues. Alright, now this is your current ladder. So, I'm position 20th in bronze 1. 17 points, veteran, etc wins 236 and once you've win, won a game 
your points go up by a certain amount, and when you lose a game, your points go down. So you have a bit in danger of being demoted once you've lost, I think, it's either one or two games from zero points. And when you get to 100, well, in bronze one, you have a best of, third, best of five, but in any other division, oops, you need to win a best of three. And once you win best of five, you go to silver. The order is as follows, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, and then challenger. Challenger is the highest. So yeah. And finally, thanks for watching guys. I hope this helped a lot. Please message me if I've left something out, which most probably I did. Remember to subscribe if you liked it, and I would appreciate it if you shared this video with people who are new to Ranked. Bye.